Watch your head. There's no room for pride here. There's a centuries-old stone convent in Mexico, and it's not functioning anymore, so to speak, but you can still walk its hallways as a tourist. All the doors of the convent are your typical seven-foot doors, but the doors into the chapel are different. The doors to enter the chapel are four feet high. So anybody that wants to go into the house of the Lord, watch your head. There's no room for pride here. Both literally and figuratively, watch your head. There's no room for pride because before God, there's only one glory. There's no such things as two glories in this world. We sing in some of our communion services the, the song, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. All glory belongs to God. Maybe that goes without saying, but maybe we still need to say it on a day like today. All glory is His. There is no other kind of glory. And He's a jealous God. He will not share His glory with an idol or give His praise to others, right? So the glory of men and the glory of God, really pride and glory of God, are at odds with each other. They're not just opposites. They are enemies. And today, we think of the trouble for us with self-pride in the sense of it's like breathing. Self-pride is like a heartbeat inside of you. You don't even have to consciously think about it, and yet you're still promoting yourself and the things that you say and the things that you do. It just happens. It just boom, boom, boom. The heartbeat that keeps pulsing through your body, a self-promotion lurking there inside of us. A four-foot door into church isn't going to fix that. But the glory of God and of His power and His love can and do. Today, God gives you a new heart that pumps. God leads us to honor a different way in our lives, the way of humility. God simply says, do not exalt yourself in the king's presence. Proverbs 25. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence. And do not claim a place among the great. Well, why not? It is better for him, someone like a king, it's better for him to say to you, come up here to exalt you, than for him to humiliate you and put you down before a nobleman. I think anybody would agree with that statement. Everybody likes to be important and honored. It's nice feeling. Nobody likes to be embarrassed. No, no college football team enjoys the upset, right? You, and you are the better or the whatever. You appreciate the honor and the praise that goes along with it, and that's kind of common among men. So for a moment, this word of God kind of sounds like, here's how you can be honored among people, like a little trick that God gives us in our relationships in the world. And the trick is, start yourself off low. Because it's better to be honored in other people's eyes than to be humiliated. So, you know, set the bar low. Set expectations low around other people. Put yourself at the bottom. Oh, I'm not really that good. You know, play down your game, so to speak. And then you're more likely to be lifted up. And it sound, oh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. I'll play the humble card all day long and then people will be singing my praises when I, you know, I, I prove to them that I'm better than I said I was. That's not God's word, though, is it? God doesn't look at those outward things, and God doesn't glory in the things man glories in. God looks at the heart. God molds and shapes our attitudes, and the warning that he gives us today is not about how to manipulate the world to get self-pride promoted in you. That's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. His word is a warning of this reality. Jesus summarized it very beautifully for you today. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And the promise, whoever humbles himself, will be exalted. So the command, don't honor yourself, don't exalt yourself in the king's presence, and the command, don't claim a place among great men, 
these are the warnings of don't put yourself up on a pedestal because pride comes before a fall. God is not going to take that. There's no room for pride here. God's not going to share glory with you in that worldly glory sense. He's going to humble all who exalt themselves. That's a key basic point of God's word here for today. So let me ask you this. Which statement best represents you? I am the greatest of all, or I am the least of all? And you say to me, boy, that's a dumb question. Who among here would stand up and say, yes, I am the greatest of all? I mean, we're Christian people. We know God is the God of all, the ruler, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. None of us is going to stand up and say, I am the greatest of all, unless you're some fool and, and you're a godless braggart. But notice what our text says. Don't exalt yourself where? Not before God. In the king's presence. Few would dare to exalt themselves before God. But when the playground is among people, pride loves to play. When the playground is down here among the great, and I'm not comparing myself with a God I can't see, but I'm comparing myself with the people that are all around me. My interactions and my relationships with other people are my playground for pride. What do we do? Well, are there some people that are more important in your eyes than other people? Are there some people of more value in your eyes than other people? Who do you promote? And who do you put down? And why do you do that? But we do that. We make all these kinds of categories. We create this like pecking order in the world. Some people get up, some people go down in our eyes, and that's the way it works. We compare people, and when we compare, we're really competing with them. And the really striking thing is how often in my mind I turn out the winner. Even though I may not be the brightest and best, actually, I mean, none of us here are the brightest and best in a given thing in this world, right? And yet, I still find a way, when that brightest and best out there, I still find a way of kind of chipping away at their glory because I can focus on their flaw or their weakness or their not-so-good characteristic. And that makes me feel better, too. So I don't have to be a king to be arrogant. I can be poor and bring down the mighty in my mind, and I still win. Are you the greatest of all? or the least of all, and perhaps a more important question is, on what basis? I don't think we as Christians compare ourselves with others based on wealth so much, or fame. I mean, the whole Hollywood thing, we, we don't, Scientology, and we, we, we bring them down pretty quick. We don't glory these things of the world like popularity and power and wealth. But do you create a hierarchy when it comes to character? Do you judge people based on their morality or their belief? Perhaps that's where we struggle. Somebody who doesn't look like they keep the Ten Commandments that well mm, sinks in my mind and put them down. Somebody whose character I don't respect put them down in my mind. Be careful, God says. For the measure you use to judge others, whatever ruling stick, if it's character, belief, morality, whatever, God will use that same stick with you. Striking, terrifying. Whatever height of glory you see in the eyes of the world and with the eyes of your own pride, God says, do not claim a place among the great. Whatever house you build of glory in this life, this worldly glory, God's going to blow it away like a house of straw. Two weeks ago, this 80-foot maple in my backyard, borders my yard and the neighbor's yard, dropped a beast of a branch on my yard. A little bit on the gutter, but we're okay. 
and I was describing to somebody all the labor that it took and all the effort that it took to chop up and, and clean up the yard because this is like huge branch. And they shared with me a saying from a, a woodsman, from like a lumberjack who said that wood hits you four times because you have to cut it down, chop it up, stack it, and burn it. Wood hits you four times. How many times does pride hit you? You're not only hurting yourself because you're setting yourself up for a fall. You're also hurting your neighbor. It's a form of murder, a form of hatred of your neighbor because you're competing against them instead of serving them and giving yourself for them. To not only that, but you're profaning God's name, the God who is a God of love, the God who glories in grace and mercy. You're profaning that name in this world. Three. Three heavy hitters. Run from these. Turn away from them. Repent of this. Throw out these empty trophies of the glory of the world. Turn away from all these things that the, that the world wants to celebrate. Run from the foolish competition. It's meaningless and empty in this life, right? Examine yourself only before God and in the light of His Word. All have sin and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. I ask you a third time, are you the greatest or are you the least of all? Would you be surprised to know that you're both? We are the least of all. We are the bottom of the barrel when we are examining ourselves in the light of the Ten Commandments and God's Word. We're down at the bottom. We are a fallen race in our sin. But could you be any greater than to have the greatness God has given you in our Lord Jesus Christ? Could you be exalted any higher than the exaltation God has given you in the forgiveness of your sins? We are a saved people. We are a forgiven people, a mercy people. What people are so great in that sense as to have that boast, a real, true boast, because it's in the Lord? Make the comparison with the Old Testament. Just before they entered their promised land, wise Moses gave the people in, in, through Deuteronomy, it's in that book, a warning. I don't want you to you know, get a big head. You're about to inherit a whole lot in your promised land. Lots of good things are coming your way. Don't forget you were once slaves in Egypt. Don't forget the Lord who brought you up out of there. And he says to them these two things. You are not the most numerous people. I'm the least of all. You are not the, the most numerous people when God chose you. You're not the greatest nation. You're not the strongest nation. You're about to take over a land and dispossess peoples who are stronger and greater than you. Humbling, right? But then Moses says to them, Is there any nation so great as to have their gods as close to them as the Lord our God is close to us? Is there any nation so great? Think about it, he says. Go back to Adam and Eve. Have you ever seen anything like this, where the gods of the world take a people out of another nation and make it all their own? Have you ever seen anything so glorious, so great in your life? You are the greatest people. You are the people of the Lord. There's nothing greater than to have the God of all glory close to you. I picture a little girl on the carpet floor with her toy tea set all laid out in front of her. But she's alone, so she gets up and she finds her doll. And she sets the doll down at the tea set and grabs the teapot, picks it up, looks at the doll and says, would you like some tea? And for the next half hour, she serves that doll. The eternal God the maker of heaven and earth came to serve you, the worst, the chief of sinners, the proud, the arrogant, the boastful, came to give up all for you. 
when God sent his son, he puts to shame all the glory of this world. There's no pomp or circumstance. There's no earthly power, no earthly wealth. Just a little Virgin Mary. There's no worldly glory at all. He puts it all to shame. He empties himself and gives it all up for us. And not only that, but when God sent Jesus, he makes much of mercy. He makes much of grace and love. And Jesus gives his life to the cross for your sins. We didn't deserve it. But there he is. To honor the way of humility in this life is really to honor the way of grace. It's to honor the glory of God that Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He didn't come to put it to shame. He didn't just come to lower the exalted. He also came to lift up the lowly, to bring the only true exaltation there is by dying to your sins on the cross and rising again. He lifts you up. Mary gets it. And she sings that beautiful song, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. What has he done? He's shown the strength of his arm. His strength is shown in that weakness. He scattered the proud in their conceit. He's cast down the mighty from their thrones. All of this bringing down of the glory of the world because look at what God is glory. It's something totally different. He's in a totally different world. But he has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Mary gets it. Jesus coming is the end of all the glory of the world. It's a humbling of all the exaltation that this world likes to celebrate. And it's a raising up and a revealing and a giving of the glory of God, grace to you in Christ Jesus, the forgiveness of all of your sins. How humbling to be so exalted by God. To honor the way of humility is to honor the way of grace. So when I enter a room and the world sees some who are, oh, they're the important people, they're the VIPs, and some people who are small in the eyes of the world, I don't see that. I see people who need the glory of God. People who lack because they've fallen short, but people who have been given it in our Lord Jesus Christ. When the children come to see Jesus, I don't do the disciple thing and say, oh, you're small, little child. Stay away from Jesus. You're not intelligent enough. You have no wealth. You have no power. You have no fame. You're small in the eyes of the world. Don't bother Jesus right now. But Jesus lifts them up into his own arms to touch them and bless them and love them. What a beautiful picture. To honor the way of humility is to honor the love of God. Who is small in your life? No. When they've been so exalted by a Savior who came to die for them. So it is my goal to serve. I go into the room with new eyes and a new heart. I celebrate something different. The glory of God and the grace of God. I want to stand and say to people who are small and people who are great alike, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. I will exalt you. Watch your head. Watch your head. Let us bow low following Jesus in life to the glory of God and the salvation of all. Amen. Please stand.